Honoring the year of the Atlanta Olympics, the USDF invited four past American Olympians to conduct the 1996 National Symposium. Throughout the sessions, Jessica Ronshausen, Hilda Gurney, Michael Poulin, and Robert Dover emphasized that no serious training can take place until the rider has developed a secure and independent seat. Here is Jessica Ronshausen. We're concerned with the line that starts from the shoulders, travels through the hip, and comes to the heel. And the rider needs to get that line by spending a lot of preliminary time either on the lunge line or riding without stirrups. And probably riding without stirrups is the quickest way for a rider to get a really good seat and a very steady good leg position. When I started riding, uh, I started on the lunge line. And I stayed on the lunge line an awful long time. And I stayed on a lunge line with a German instructor who didn't allow me to have stirrups or reins. So then they incorporated vaulting into my daily schedule. And I was not allowed to touch reins or have my feet in stirrups for the first two-thirds of a year. The instructors that I had said, before you're allowed to have an effect on the horse with the bit in his mouth, with that much strength and power, then first you have to learn to be able to follow the natural motion of the horse. It's so important that we remember that our first priority is to the horse and his welfare. And if we start to try to make things happen before we're able to sit in balance and harmony with the animal, then we're already starting from the wrong idea as far as our riding career. The other line that we are going to be concerned with will be the rider's elbow, wrist, and the horse's mouth. And that line is also a very important line. When you use your aids, you don't always have your hands in a perfect line. And surely when you take a half halt, or if a horse is diving in a downward transition, or if a horse is diving around the corner, you're going to have to adjust the horse. But it's the quickness that the rider is able to come back to the original position that makes the picture stay as close to a classical picture as possible. I can't stress enough the importance of taking enough time, especially with young riders or people who are beginning to learn about dressage, and taking enough time to get these lines to be second nature in the rider. I can't tell you as a judge how often I see Riders whose legs are too far forward. Riders whose legs are never steady enough on the horse's sides. And riders whose upper bodies are either always behind the motion of the horse or are not at least in harmony with the horse's stride. Hilda Gurney applauded this rider's seat and legs for their relaxation. The absence of gripping thighs and the way her foot lies parallel to the horse's side. Most people start doing dressage, and even the top riders, and I know Catherine does this all the time, or she wouldn't sit so beautifully, is they take their knee and thigh out like this, show everybody how you do that, to loosen it. And you'll see riders even doing this in the test to loosen the knee and thigh to make they're not gripping, so sure they're not gripping. And what this also does is it spreads your seat bones. 
And when you spread, and you can all do this, when you, can, when you spread your seat bones, that relaxes the ligaments in your hips. And walk, Catherine. And then that enables you to follow with your hips. Let your hips move, honey, in a very nice, loose way. I would also like to add my feelings on hand position, but I'm only going to do it if you guys do it with me. So Catherine gets to relax a minute. First, to hold your reins, take your thumb and put it on top of your forefinger with a slight bend in the thumb. Come on, I want to see you guys do this. Thumb on top of your forefinger, no pins in your hand, a slight bend in the thumb. And you keep, a, that's where you hold the rein, but it's very important to keep a slight bend in the thumb. If you make the thumb flat, feel that stiff in you? Make your thumb flat. Feel how stiff that makes your hand? You want to have a slight bend. Now, your other fingers, and the rein should come out near the base of your fingers, the other fingers should touch the palm of your hand. Touch. Don't grip. If you grip, you'll feel how stiff that makes your hands. Don't grip. Just touch. Now, to soften your horse, your minimal softening aid is to vibrate your fingers, not your index finger. Only vibrate your other fingers. And by the way, we usually don't use the pinky because it just can't hold anything. If you pull on your pinky, take your other hand and pull on your pinky, and it can hold nothing. Pull on your ring finger, and it's very strong. So generally, when riders ride, they do not use their pinky because it doesn't have enough muscle connected in the forearm. There's no muscles in your hand anyway. They're in your forearm. But it, so you leave the pinky out because it's just too weak. And so you, the minimal hand aid is to vibrate the other fingers. Then, if you need a little more softening hand, you vibrate your wrist. I'm not talking this. We're talking vibrate. Now try that. Vibrate your wrist. And vi now, see how good you can get, vibrate your wrist and vibrate your fingers. Okay? Then, at the walk and the canter, you also need to follow the horse's head. Horses can't help but nod their head at the walk and the canter. So at the walk and the canter, follow the horse's head. Come on, let's see you guys do that. I want to see these hands following. Now vibrate your fingers. Vibrate your wrists and keep following. And if you have to follow your horse's head at the trot, it's lame, so take it back to the barn. Okay? 